Hey everyone, in my last few videos I spoke about the Ubiquiti Cloud Gateway Fiber and I've since integrated the Ubiquiti USW aggregation switch. I've had it running for about a week and it's at the heart of my network. Every single device on my network will go through that switch and it's the only connection to the Ubiquiti Cloud Gateway Fiber. Now I will do a full review of that switch in the future. I want to spend more time playing around with it finding out what I like and perhaps more importantly, what I don't like. But what I'd like to do today is talk about some other purchases that I've made, mostly about these RG45 transceivers, but I will give a shout out to the Ubiquiti DAX, the direct attached cables. I bought four of these and I bought them for the aggregation switch and three of them are in the aggregation switch ready. And now I'll probably repeat myself with the, in the future in the aggregation switch review because I kind of delayed that video to do more testing. But yes, I, I bought these for the aggregation switch. You can see the model number there. The only criticism I guess is that these only come at 0 0.5 meters is for in, in the short end. Um, I think 0.25 would have been good for my setup. But if I do switch to a third party alternative, I can always use these in the future with another switch. But, the SFP adapters here, the transceivers. Now, if you look on the Ubiquiti website, you can see that I've got the SFP Plus to RJ45 adapter. And the model number is, get it here, UACC CM RJ45 MG, 60 pounds on the Unify store. As you can imagine, it is out of stock. So it's 60 pounds, they charge 10 pounds delivery as well, but it's out of stock. It is now in the European store but I opted to buy it from a company called Comms Express. I've never used this company before, but they charge £64 per transceiver. So for all of these, I spent way over £250, which is how much you could spend on a dedicated switch rather than having transceivers. And that is something I would have liked to have done, but it's difficult to do that because of what I'm trying to do and because of the limitations of what Ubiquiti offer. Now, what I'm trying to do is connect directly from my aggregation switch here up to the office. So aggregation switch directly to the patch panel, which is RG45 up here. And then I've got two 10 gigabit ethernet connection, 20 gigabits per second. And I've got eight SFP plus ports, but it does support four RG45 tran transceivers. You just have to space them out. So that's the limitation I was working with. Now, transceivers are the obvious choice as far as quick and easy, quick, quick and dirty, gets the job done. But I, I would have liked to have, you know, looked at a, another switch perhaps. A, a switch did start to make sense when I was buying four of these. But when you look at Unify's offerings, Ubiquiti's offerings, they've got 44 switches just now. There's more if you consider discontinued options. But when you select 10 gigabit ethernet, you're down to 12 and most of these are big rack solutions. Now what I needed was something that had 10 gigabit ethernet RJ45 and SFP plus and you can see there's four models and three of them are massive rack options. The smallest one is still actually too big for my rack downstairs because I've got such a shallow rack but this does tick a lot of boxes it's just not available yet this is a new product and it's probably going to be out of stock for months knowing ubiquity but this is the best part of £500 and it's got eight 10 gigabit ethernet ports there and two 10 SFP plus ports. This would have been perfect for, for my situation. It's maybe something I'll pick up in the future, but it's not available. So back to the drawing board, which means that no, there's no SFP plus solutions for me. The only one that really ticked one box for me was, was this, the, the Flex 10 gigabit ethernet, which is £275. But when you actually look at this, it's a, it's a baffling product. It doesn't have an SFP plus connection. It's got five ports, but one of the ports is PoE, so it's really just for power. So you've really only got four 10 gigabit Ethernet RJ45 ports here. Now you imagine if I connected two connections here to this uh, switch here, if I wanted to connect two cables, I would need two transceivers. So I'd still have to spend, you know, like 130, 140 pounds on transceivers to connect from my aggregation switch to this, and then that would go into the patch panel upstairs. So if I connected two in, I'd need two out to go to the patch panel. It's a completely pointless product for me in that situation. 
there's an argument that if I only wanted to do one 10 gigabit Ethernet connection upstairs or whatever, then, you know, if I wanted to limit, limit capacity, then maybe you could argue this. But then even if I only put one connection between this switch and the ubiquity switch, I still need to put two upstairs and then I'm left with one. It just felt like a waste of time and a waste of money. So transceivers sometimes sometimes feel like a temporary solution because you know if you inevitably buy a bigger switch in the future, then these end up gathering dust. But I'm a I'm a big fan of transceivers because they are versatile and you can use them in a lot of different situations. Now I can't say whether these are the best product for you to buy or not. I can't sit here and say Go out and buy these, ubiquity products are the best. I don't know, I've been using these for less than a day. They do seem to be working, but with transceivers, it's always long-term, you know, how they perform. What I've always found difficult with transceivers is it's so difficult to find a good review of them. And it's it's difficult to rely on other people's opinions. And I know why, because, you know, I've got a Mikrotech S Plus RJ10 transceiver, and it worked well for me in certain situations, but not in others. Now, for example, the Mikrotech is working with my QNAP down there, that QNAP switch, and it's working great, but it's working at lower speeds, and it's working in a switch which has fans, and it's cooled. You know, it's, an, it's a really nice environment to be in. In contrast, the Mikrotech transceiver with the Mikrotech switch that I've got, it doesn't work great. At 10 gigabit Ethernet, that was throttling, and it would just switch off because it was overheating. And that's the problem. The Mikrotech switch is fanless, it's not cooling the transceiver, so it doesn't work. So I could go online and say that transceiver is terrible. But I think in that situation, it's the switch that's terrible. It's not the transceiver. So I could have just opted for more Mikrotrick uh, transceivers or more third-party transceivers. And that might have made sense because a lot of these transceivers are like half the cost of the ubiquity ones. But as you know, with transceivers, you know, sometimes there can be compatibility issues and some of them run hotter than others. And the Mikrotech one that I've got, it does run hot. And the comments that I saw with these ones was that they're on a little bit cooler and obviously ubiquity, with ubiquity, you don't have any compatibility problems. So it just seemed to make sense to spend the extra money and get the good ones rather than some of the other ones. But like I said, it, as far as whether a transceiver is good or not, it's sometimes difficult to know because when someone online says that a transceiver works or it doesn't work, you don't know how they're using it. You don't know if they're using it with a switch which supports it, whether it's using a switch that's got cooling, sufficient cooling, or what speeds they're using. You know, they could be using it at very low speeds and they're not actually pushing it. They're not passing a lot of bandwidth, so it's not overheating. So you don't know, you know, when you look at a lot of these reviews, they're missing out key information like that. They're not telling you what switch they're using. They're not telling you if their switch is, you know, in a cupboard somewhere where it's, where it's you know, overheating because there's just too much heat in there. So it's difficult to know. But I just decided to go with Ubiquity. It felt like the safer option. And yes, it's more money. There were some options that were cheaper. But if you consider, consider these things long term over years, it's, it's kind of easier to justify the cost. So that's where I am just now in the home network, guys. My rack just now is kind of ugly because uh, the DAC cables that I've got are a little bit too long and the, the cables coming from the transceivers are too long. So I need to buy some replacement cables with those as well. Make the cables a little bit shorter, a little bit of tidying up to do. But the network is coming along. It is getting better. All of these things, yes, they're expensive to pick up at the time. But I find with these things, generally speaking, they don't break generally i don't want to jinx myself but they don't break you buy them they last for years and i didn't want to buy something that was cheap and then you know you buy cheap you buy twice so i'm happy with what i've got they seem to be working great and yeah at the moment all is well so please do stay tuned for future videos if you've enjoyed this one please do give it a thumbs up subscribe to the channel post a comment all the good stuff and until next time take care